Good evening and welcome to News Hour. I am Kodro Kwafu. Coming up in tonight's edition of News Hour, President Julius Madabio says it is impossible to live in the world without education. The National Electoral Commissioner calls for adequate support to the National Civil Registration and Ozone Secretariat Chief Legal and Compliance Officer updates the Foreign Affairs Minister on the Montreal Protocol. All the stories and more are lined up in tonight's edition of News Hour. And now to our first story in News Hour tonight. The Sierra Leone Industrial Fishing Companies Association has asked the president to look into high taxes that have been levied on their businesses. Well, the association claims that the taxes are negatively affecting them. They also made an appeal during the court to call of the president. Let's now join Harm Osiri for more on that story. Updating President Julius Madabu about the fishing industry in Sierra Leone, President of the Association Basim Mohammed stated that according to the Food and Agricultural Organization 2012 report on fish and fisheries, products are among the most trade food commodities in the world, representing about 10% of agricultural exports. He said Sierra Leone continues to be the leader in cheaper fish price offered to customers in the West African sub-region. We have been able to sell our fish at a cheaper price because of the better management strategic partnering with Chinese fish suppliers who sell their catch at lower cost to players in the industry. The fisheries industry contributes between 12 and 15 percent to the country's gross domestic product, Mr. Mohammed disclosed. This is the result of better, we've been able to manage our resources with strategic partnerships, mainly Chinese suppliers and certain other suppliers, other European suppliers. So they've always given us the catch that we purchase, which there's an obligation for vessels to, to hand over to the local agents at concessionary prices. And we've made sure that our prices are the cheapest in the sub-region and in Africa. We've always kept a cheap, the cheapest price we can to the local market. President Julius Madabu pledged his support to the fisheries sector as it is among the priorities of his government. What we want to do generally is to make sure that um, our activities in that industry are also dominated by the locals. We want to gain from these uh, resources and uh, we want to make sure that we create an environment where Sierra Leoneans can also own our boats. It's been, we've been on the fringes for a very long time, uh, where we only act as agents. We should be thinking of progressing now. How do we do that? He said that his government is aware of the potential of the sector to boost the country's economy for which value addition will be ensured for fish and fisheries products from Sierra Leone to access the global market, including European markets, he assured players in the industry that he has listened to their concerns and governments will look into them. We should be thinking of uh, adding value to our fish, uh, marine resources, and also exporting these so that we have the, you know, we complete the, the, the value chain and make more money at home. So in our future discussion, I would want us to really look at those collectively. Uh, as an industry so that you can also have a decent 
you know, uh, reward for the hard work that you put into this industry. In another development, the newly approved chairman of the Public Service Commission, Kalilu Umauba, and two other commissioners, Mohamed Grankaluku Kroma and Alaji Banil Ilal Sise, have subscribed to the oath of office in accordance with Section 1518 of the Constitution of Sierra Leone. The said section stipulates that a member of the Public Service Commission shall, before assuming the functions of this office, subscribe to the oath of office before the president. Shortly after subscribing to the oath of office, the new chairman who spoke on behalf of the other commissioners thanked President Bio for the show of thrust and confidence in them. He said that Sierra Leone had one of the best public service decades ago, but unfortunately that is not the case at present. On behalf of my commissioners and my humble self, permit me to say a big thank you for the confidence reposed on us as chairman and members of this great institution, the Public Service Commission. Records reveal that up to the late 70s, Sierra Leone had the best public service in the West Coast. So many things have happened thereabouts. It is against this backdrop I and my commissioners are determined to transform the public service into a dynamic entity to address the challenges of this era and the 21st century. President Bill congratulated the new appointees on their new role, adding that the Public Service Commission over the years has been facing a lot of challenges. This is a huge task, as you rightly said. It used to be the best, but now definitely um, it is not. And that gives you a very huge task. You have my support, and I wish you a successful tenure in that office. And um, you are sure of my support at all times to transform this service into one that can deliver on time in an inefficient manner. The Public Service Commission was established in 1948 with the mandate to appoint persons to hold or to act in offices in the public service, including power to make appointees, promotions, and to exercise disciplinary control over persons holding or acting in such offices. SABC TV News are in Freetown. How are most reporting? Well, still with the president, Julius Madabiu, president of Sierra Leone, has said that without education, it is just impossible to live in today's world. He made the disclosure during the turning of the sword at the Sierra Leone Police Wives Administrative and Vocational Training Center building at the King Tom Police Barracks in Freetown. Other stakeholders, which include the ministers, police and businessmen, also made pledges towards the construction of the Vocational Training Center. Harmosi witnessed the ceremony and she now reports. President Julius Madabio noted that women are a key component that helps to provide support to the development process of any society, stating that on countless occasions he had called on the police to rise onto the challenge of keeping law and order in the country. President Bill said they have been able to do so means they have the support of their wives pledging that his administration will continue to provide support to the police in working towards their core mandate, which is maintaining law and order. He said the project is a step in the right direction as it will create the opportunity for more women to be skilled in different vocational fields, thereby becoming more lawful in society. So I want to start by thanking all of you who have made pledges to support this project. And I hope that you will honor your pledges in time so that before the end of next year, the building will come up and we all come here again happily thereafter to see the product of our generosity. He said he chose education as his flagship project because without solid education, it will be very difficult to succeed as a nation. 
The president described education as the bedrock for the development of any nation and therefore called on the women to grab the opportunities. I am here because the aspiration of these projects fall directly in line with the new direction. I choose the new direction because it is the right direction. Every nation that has succeeded on arts is one that is founded on quality education, President Bill added. Education I chose as my flagship program. It was not meant to win me votes. It is because I believe very deeply in my heart that without solid foundation, which only quality education can provide, we cannot succeed as a nation. The bedrock of sustainable development everywhere around the world is education. So for me, you can pour every amount of money. You can give us the technical uh, assistance that you can give. But we have to have quality education. President of the Police Wives Association, Mrs. Olga Moigbe, thanked President Bill for honoring their invitation, saying he had fulfilled a criteria expert for the police wives, especially their constitutional right to freedom of association and shelter, which are the fundamental human rights. She commended the president for the attitude leadership he is providing, describing him as a blessing to the country. Madam Olga Moegwe noted that the structure is of great importance to the institution and the country, adding that the investment is in the project and says and represents a significant boost to the image of the Police Wives Association capable of attracting investment as well as addressing the needs of its members. Organizations. We are unique women in a unique situation and we do things positively. Our membership is open to all police wives nationwide and we are growing with any recruitment made to the Sierra Leone police force. We are dedicated to providing support, resources, friendship and love to one another in the daily struggles of being a wife. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Sierra Leone Police Wives Association is a very unique association that does things in style, as is going to be evident today in this ceremony. The First Lady of Civilian Fatima Bu highlighted that the proposed administrative and vocational training building serves not only as an economic need, but also one of the most pressing social needs for the association. The construction of the Vocational Institute means they can now host important conference in the sub-region, get meetings with donor agencies, non-governmental organizations, and development partners. The First Lady said the conference will address concerns of the police wives, their welfare problems, and provide training on their financial independence, help educate and provide the educational standards of the less privileged women while calling on various stakeholders to support the successful completion of the project. SABC TV News are in Freetown, how I'm also reporting. The National Electoral Commissioner, Nfa Ali Conte, has called on the government to provide adequate support to the National Civil Registration Authority if NEC must conduct credible elections in 2023. The NEC Commissioner made the statement during the commemoration of the first ever African Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Day held at the Miata Conference Hall in Freetown. The theme for the celebration is promoting innovative universal civil registration and vital statistics system for good governance and better lives. Aminash Nyandi Brahma filed in this report. Well, we will bring you that report later on in the program. 
The Chief Legal and Compliance Officer of Ozone Secretariat of the United Nations Environment Protect Environmental Programme, UNEP, Dr. Gilbert M. Bankubeza, has updated the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation on the significance of Sierra Leone's ratification of the Kigali Amendments to the Montreal Protocol. Hawada to Bangura reports. Dr. Bankobiza was accompanied by staff of the Environment Protection Agency in Sierra Leone, EPA. The visit was to further draw government's attention through the minister to ratify or amend five other multilateral environmental agreements. Dr. Gilbert Bankobiza informed Dr. Ali Kabar that the Kigali Amendment is an amendment to the 1987 Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer which Sierra Leone became a party to in 2001. The amendment, he went in, adds powerful greenhouse gases, hydrofluorocarbons, to the list of substances controlled under the protocol to be phased down. The chief legal and compliance officer said, by ratifying the Kigali amendment, Sierra Leone would be required to meet its obligations under the provisions of the amendment and gain support needed, technical and financial, for the various regulatory bodies involved in the management, control and protection of the environment. He said Kigali will enter into force on 1st January 2019, provided that it is ratified by at least 20 parties to the Montreal Protocol. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Dr. Ali Kaba, said that President Julius Madabio has emphasized the need to pay attention to quality health, improved sanitation and environmental management during his speech at the state's opening of parliament in May this year. He assured the UNEP envoy of his ministry's commitment, collaboration and cooperation with other MDAs, including EPA Sierra Leone, to determine the way forward in the ratification of the amendment. The minister added that the ratification of relevant MEAs will therefore demonstrate the new direction government's commitment to climate diplomacy, which is all about protecting human health and the environment. The Anti-Corruption Commission has updated journalists on the ongoing 2017 Hatchgate investigations and other corruption-related matters that are in court. One of the ACC prosecutors was addressing journalists at the Ministry of Information and Communications. Millicent Lungay filed in this report read by Alice Marima Thompson. According to officials from the Anti-Corruption Commission, since the approval of the Commissioner Francis Ben Kenfala on the 28th of June this year, the Commission has been ensuring that the public is updated on several corruption-related issues, including Hajj Gates, the Sierra Hotel deal, the Youth Ministry probe and all the pending cases. Journalists were also informed about the first provincial tour by the new Commission of the ACC, which was meant to engage stakeholders in the new direction stance on corruption and its dissemination to fight corruption. They inform media practitioners that the special court for Sierra Leone premises is being refurbished for corruption related cases only. If you know anybody, not excluding the Deputy Minister seated here, who is involved in corruption, please bring it to the Commission and see what will happen to that person. In the, the, the current minister, the then minister, we have not, except for those files which had been on different minor issues which we are looking at, we have not lodged any investigations into the Ministry of Land. Investigations are ongoing at the Ministry of Youth Affairs for the misappropriation of project funds for the youth firm and other projects worth billions of leons, says Prosecutor Emmanuel Kovaya Amara. The number of investigations are adding up to the, the matters which are being investigated already or which are being under investigations. And since the 28th, the Commission has completed investigations on the Nazi Sisimi matter, which involved, you know, the setting up of an SPV emanating, well, a special purpose vehicle emanating from a JVC, a JVA, that's a joint venture agreement, which was actually reached by NASIT, Sierra Leone, and Sisimi. 
Prosecutor Emmanuel Kovaya Amara said Section 7 of the Corruption Act gives the SEC mandate to investigate without preferential treatment. Section 7 of this Act, the Anti-Corruption Act 2008, <coughs> gives the Commission the mandate to investigate instances of corruption or corrupt practices. When we get any complaint that hinges on anybody, we investigate it without, without deference or without, um, um, how, how, what do I say, without any preference. We investigate it using the standards of investigations. That's to say, we enter upon investigations of allegations with a view to proving or disproving the allegations. He said that staff for the Anti-Corruption Commission work on Saturdays to ensure that expedition takes prominence in their work. A one-day forum on needs assessment for rolling out integrated human resource information system on the theme Building a Resilient Health Workforce has ended at the Atlantic Hall of the National Stadium. The new system will capture and maintain high quality information for the healthcare workforce in order to have improved healthcare service delivery. Doug Barry reports. The Integrated Human Resource Information System is an open source software that tracks and manages health workforce for an improved service delivery. Integrated Human Resource Information System will promote a decentralized data system that will capture training, promotion, and placement of health workers. The Deputy Minister of Health and Sanitation, Dr. Anthony Augustine Sandy, said the introduction of decentralized human resource system provides relevant information and stock takings of health workers. He said their aim is to inform the public about the available human resource at district level. It has equally provided the opportunity for healthcare workers to have instant access to relevant human resource information, thereby making their duties more evidence-based. Ladies and gentlemen, among the diverse responsibilities of the directorate, creating and maintaining a comprehensive list of all healthcare workers and health facilities countrywide and monitoring staff attendance are a few to mention. The Integrated Human Resource Information System will help the Ministry monitor its health workers for an effective service delivery. Senior Human Resource Officer, Minister of Health and Sanitation, Selu Kefala, said the Integrated Human Resource Information shows the Ministry's readiness in having an electronic system of district health medical teams and hospitals. He said that since 2016, the ministry has transformed its human resource system in order to promote effective service delivery. The database that manages the workforce of the ministry, um, but this particular database has been in operation since 2016. However, it is only limited to the headquarters of the ministry, that is EU building. Um, the directorate in 2017 has decentralized most of its activities by deploying human resource officers. Director of Primary Health Care, Dr. Ali Rui, said the integrated human resource information system demonstrates strides made by the health ministry to have a decentralized database of health workers. He said the initiative will address trainings and postings of health personnel. He informed his audience that the health ministry will prioritize postgraduate studies. Well, let's now bring you the story in which the NEC Commissioner Nfa Ali Conte is calling on the government to provide adequate supports to the National Civil Registration Authority if they are to conduct credible elections in the in 2023. The NEC Commissioner made the statement during the commemoration of the first ever African Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Day held at the Miata Conference Hall here in Freetown. The theme for the celebration is promoting innovative universal civil registration and vital statistics system for good governance and better lives. Let's join Aminash Nyandi Brahma who filed in this report. Register, 
Civil registration and vital statistics are essential for modern administrative systems. Creating an inclusive society, protecting human rights, ensuring proper delivery of public services, and tracking discriminations and inequalities, amongst other related issues. Most countries in Africa had a civil registration systems for decades. Yet the system was not functioning well due to the fact that it was not compulsory, universal, and complete, but the CRV statistics are essential for modern administrative systems. The National Electoral Commission at Mfa Ali Conte said in the last voting registration, the National Electoral Commission knew that there was the need for civil registration, which the Commission started doing. They were bashed by politicians and civil society groups not to do the registration, but to only do the voter registration, underscoring the importance of the civil registration. Mr. Conte spoke about his commission's commitment to work with the NCRA. The next register of voters will be extracted from the civil register and called for the need for government, political parties, development partners and civil societies to support to the NCRA. The National Civil Registration Act of 2016, Part 6, Section 25B, gives the Director General of NCI the power to provide information to, I quote, the National Electoral Commission with the purpose of getting an updated register of voters for the conduct of public elections and referenda, end quote. While Section 7, 1A of the Public Elections Act 2012, amongst other functions, makes provision for the continuous registration of eligible voters for all public elections and referenda. The Director General National Civil Registration Authority, Mohamed Mubashi Masakwe, said the establishment of NCRA by the Act of Parliament in 2016 demonstrates government recognition and commitment is key for effective implementation of inclusive development that is determined by the AU 2063 Agenda and Africa Union and the Global 2030 Agenda and leaving no one behind. He said the civil registration provides individuals with essential legal documents required to secure basic human rights to name, identity, nationality and civil rights and access to basic social services. He emphasized the government's determination in the establishment of the NCRA. An evidence of system challenge is the fact that the government of Sierra Leone continues to contend with the challenge of having a comprehensive, accurate, and reliable data on the profile of its citizens and the resident foreign population, who invariably use this challenge as, a, as an opportunity to have their profile dynamic those liable to changes as and when they desire, with little or no limitation. The Statistician General Statistics Sierra Leone Professor Usman Sanko explained that during a meeting he attended in Addis Ababa in 2010, they saw the need to recommend the celebration of the ACRVS Day in 2018 to raise the importance and urgency for a more effective and comprehensive civil registration to the highest level which he is delighted to be part of. Professor Sanko said that Sierra Leone has the National Civil Registration Authority that is highly respected and valued by government and various departments, adding that Sierra Leone is on the right path. Deputy Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Dr. Patricia Lavallee, said that establishment of the National Civil Registration Authority is in line with the international declarations and conventions to guarantee the rights of citizens and non-citizens resident in the country. She spoke about the benefits of having civil registration and statistics. The benefit of civil registration to Sierra Leone is clearly self-evident. It plays an important role in facilitating the realization of many fundamental human rights recognized in major international declarations and conventions. It provides individuals with the official recognition and documentation necessary to establish legal identity, family relationships, and civil status. The country director of UNDP, Samuel Doe, stated that it is very difficult for any country to improve if they did not understand the dynamics 
individual circumstances of the people for whom they are planning. He said he was wondering how Sierra Leone had been planned since independence when they don't have the digital register. He further maintained that the African Union had recognized this day eight years ago and commended the leadership of NCRA for acknowledging this day. Mr. Doe said Sierra Leone has the highest mortality rate in the world. <laughs> Mary Stopes Sierra Leone has dismissed as fake a list of 117 girls uh, purported to be living with HIV and AIDS. One circulating on social media claiming to have come from them. They made a statement at a press conference held at the headquarters at Abadin Road in Freetown. Sheila Reffel attended the news conference and she filed in this report. The country's largest family planning organization reassured the public that the list circulating on social media containing the identities of Sierra Leonean women living with HIV is fake. County Director Mary Stoops, Sierra Leone International, Dr. Festus Uforma Omo Obi, said the list of girls with HIV when was first seen on social media in April 2017. He said that the list was a forgery and was never published by the organization, saying the trick was an attempt to cause emotional distress to the women named on the list. We would like to assure the public that this list is a forgery and has been created or circulated, not been circulated by the organization. This is clearly an attempt to cause emotional distress to women and their partners and their families who are named on the list. And we condemn its creation. We condemn the thoughts of even its creation in the strongest possible terms ever. Client confidentiality is at the heart of the services we offer. I would like to assure you that we will never publish, we will never share the death of our clients in any form. Deputy Director General National HIV Secretariat Abdul Rahman Sissim said the news came as a shock, adding that someone was trying to create mischief to tarnish his organization's image. Mr. Sir said Mary Stopes, Sierra Leone, has been a partner to the National HIV AIDS Secretariat for over 10 years and they have confidence in the quality of HIV and AIDS related services they provide. Mr. Sir explained that the position of nurse on the confidentiality and disclosure of health records of people living with HIV is guided by the National AIDS Commission Act of 2011. What we are planning now to do is that uh, very soon or before the end of this year, we are going to review our national AIDS policy, and at the same time, we are going to review the National AIDS Act. We want to make the act bite this time around. The management of Mary Stoops Sierra Leone has made official complaints to the Ministry of Defense, the National Telecommunications Commission, National HIV Secretariat, the Criminal Investigations Department, and the Independence Media Commission for official investigations into the matter. Three accused persons, Mohamed Usman Sisse, Lamin Sorisus Sisse, and Francis Gard, have been sent to the Male Correctional Center after being denied bail for allegedly forging three local commercial bank checks worth over 32 million leons and for impersonating the president, Julius Madabio. According to the police, the three persons collected cartoons of assorted food items from PC and Sons pretending it was for the May 12, 2018 inauguration of President Bio. Aminash Nyandi Brahma has the story. Magistrate Santiki Bangua of the Freetown Magistrate Court No. 1, due to the seriousness and nature of the alleged offences denied bail to Mohamed Osman Sese, alias Assassin, Lamin Sori Sese, and Francis Gard, 
who were accused of impersonating President Bill and collected over 30 million lions worth of goods at the PC and Sons Limited at Wilkinson Road. Three accused persons were arraigned before the court on 12 count charges for conspiracy to defraud, obtaining goods on forged documents and altering forged documents contrary to law. Evidence presented in court revealed that the three accused people on diverse dates between the 7th and 8th of May 2018, with intent to defraud, conspired with other unknown persons and allegedly presented themselves as Director General of NASIT, and that NASIT had been tasked to contribute to the preparation for the May 12th inauguration of President Bill. It was further stated that the accused persons on the above date allegedly obtained a large quantity of cartons of chicken legs, sausages, gizzards, jerry cans of cooking oil, fresh milk, onions, and other assorted food items valued at 32,775,000 lions from PC and Sons Limited. The particulars of offense continue that Mohamed Osman Sisi alias assassin, Lamin Suri Sisi, and Francis Gard allegedly forged Roquel Commercial Bank checks and issued them in the name of Friesland on Wilkinson Road. Assistant Superintendent of Police Ibrahim Sheikh Mansari is prosecuting the matter, while Lead Defense Counsel Jesse Munda Jengo is representing the accused persons. Magistrate Santigi Bangura remanded the three accused persons at the male correctional center. In another related matter, Magistrate Santigi Bangura also denied granting bail to Rashid Momo for allegedly impersonating the Minister of Youth Affairs, Mohamed Oman Bangura, at the Sierra Fisheries Company. The accused was arraigned before the court on three counts of conspiracy, forgery, and altering forged documents contrary to law. The accused on Tuesday, the 10th July 2018, at the Sierra Fisheries Compound at Kisi Dockyard, conspired with other unknown persons to defraud Sierra Fisheries Company. Magistrate Santigi Bangura adjourned both matters to the 14th August 2018. Magistrate Santigi Bangura has granted a bail bond of 200 million dirhams with two shorties to a businessman, Mohamed Ejazi, the owner of Metro Hotel at Wilkinson Road, who is alleged to have stolen 147,000 United States dollars. The accused, Mohamed Ejazi, was charged with two counts of larceny and burglary and larceny contrary to law. Daphne Kamama Kali reports. The complainant, American citizen Young Choi, explained that before he booked into the hotel, the accused assured him of proper security. He checked into the hotel in July 2018, and one private security, Augustine Allen, was assigned to him by the accused, Mohamed Ijerzi, to assist him during his stay in the country. Mr. Choi was out with one of the hotel managers when thieves broke into his hotel room and stole from his luggage 147,000 United States dollars. When he reported the matter to the hotel management, he was just told sorry for the inconvenience and nothing more was done. He asked for CCTV footage, but the management said the drive was not working. Lead defense counsel Abdul Karim Koma said the accused is a Sierra Leonean businessman and he will not interfere with the prosecution witnesses and is not a flight risk. Lead associate in counsel Saeed Mohamed Sisi objected to the defense application, noting that the accused was supposed to provide the necessary security for the complaint and who is a businessman. Delivering his ruling on bail, Magistrate Santigi Bangura said he cannot go into the evidence of the complainant. The matter was adjourned to the 16th of August, 2018. The First Lady, Fatima Bio, has appealed for facilities to detect cancer in Sierra Leone. She was addressing a regional seminar on promoting cancer awareness and advocacy organized by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation of African Member States in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. As Princess Gibson reports, the first day harnessed the platform of regional first ladies. This seminar is in line with the framework for the implementation of the Istanbul Declaration by the special session of first ladies leadership in cancer control. The declaration is to actively promote cancer awareness and advocacy. 
First Lady Fatima Bio told the seminar that the management of cancer requires priority. She noted that Sierra Leone is in dire need of facilities to detect cancer. We don't have absolutely anything when it comes to cancer. And because of the late detection, most times we end up flying victims, families, and you know, all the way to Ghana for treatment because we do not have the facilities in our country. And for us to eradicate cancer, we have to have a facility, at least somewhere to start with, where a woman and a man can actually test themselves and know whether they have cancer or not. She said Sierra Leone has emerged from difficult situations, including the Ebola outbreak and the mudslide. She outlined some of the strides undertaken by the new administration to meet the expectation of the people. The First Lady admonished the Forum of First Ladies to focus on issues that will rewrite the history of the region. Princess Gibson, SLBC News. The SES Unit is a musical group formed by four young physically challenged guys. The group has released a new song and is looking out for a manager. Also, Annabelle Elizabeth, uh, Lois Pesima, Pes popularly known as Lady S, is one of the few female singers in Bo City making strides in the entertainment industry. Well, our entertainment producer, Mohamed King Milan, compiled this report. Solimara, aka Buzo the Fly, Samba Kamara, aka S1K, Dundon Esmara, aka Farasi, and Ishmael Kombabori, aka 50 Dawn, are members of a physical challenge musical group called SAS Unit. They said they gave the name SAS Unit because they are all smart guys. As a musical group, they said things are very difficult for them to survive as disabled people. 50 Don said the government has done well in signing the United Nations Convention for the Rights of Persons Living with Disability, but yet urges the government to start enforcing the laws to help remedy the plight of people living with disability. They emphasize that physical challenged people are equally talented, like any able person, and can contribute in the development of the country. The musical group was formed over three years ago to help sensitizing the public not only on issues affecting disabled people, but also on issues of attitudinal change from the general public. Their songs are varied from social commentary to love songs. Boozo Fly spoke on one of their songs, Lie Lie, as a real life story and decided to put his experience in a song to help educate people on false accusations. Who are the Now come put some for me, me are the big, are the big girl. Who are the big guy? Now come put some for me, me are the big. Now come put some for me, dear. Now come put some for me. Now come put some for me, lie lie where you the bar. 50 Don said the group is looking out for a manager to help them in their musical career. On the song Struggle, they preach to the public and the government that things are not okay, especially persons living with disability, and express hope that things will surely be better one day. Annabelle Elizabeth Louise Pesima, popularly known as Lady S, is one of the few female singers in Bo City. Lady S was born in Bo and attended the Silent Church Primary School and the Bo Commercial Secondary School. She said her passion for music came way back seeing international stars like Beyonce and Rihanna live on TV. But as a singer, she got her inspiration from Salonian female reggae singer, Cardi Black, as she used to perform most of her songs in Bo. She said her genre of music varies from reggae, R&B, and dancehall. Lady S was spotted by a sound engineer in Bo by the name of Raman when she was live on stage performing on a musical competition. 
Lady S has won various awards in bowl like Best Female Singer and Best Stage Performer. In the field of music, parents were first reluctant but later allowed her to go ahead with the music. Lady S said she wanted to be popular in the field of music not only in Bow City but also in Freetown and as well promised that one day the whole of Freetown would definitely know about her. Lady S recently released a brand new video called Carry Me Go and this song is very popular in Bow. She said she composed the song for someone special in her life and dedicated the song to all school lovers and her fans. On her passion to stay in Bow City amidst all odds in her musical career, she has this to say. I love Bow, you know. I love Bo, you know. I want to represent Bo. I was born here in Bo. I would never become a big star and abandon Bo. Then I avoid Bo. Well, many thanks to King Milan for bringing us the entertainment news. We'll now pull down the curtains on News R. But before we go, a quick reminder of our top stories. President Julius Madabiu has said it is impossible to live in a world without education. The National Electoral Commissioner has called for adequate support to the National Civil Registration and Ozon Secretariat Chief Legal and Compliance Officer has updated the Foreign Affairs Minister on the Montreal Protocol. Well, that's all in this edition of News Hour, but to you live from the SLBC. On behalf of the news team, I'm Kodjo Kwafo and I'm saying good night.